Greetings automotive enthusiasts. Today we have for you a 1990 Lotus Esprit SE Turbo. Uh, this is actually a car uh, out of our personal collection and it's one that we're gonna kind of talk about bringing some of our personal cars out and kind of bringing them to the public and doing some videos and sharing sharing our uh, passion and love for for uh, all cars here. So like I said, this is a 1990 model. I'll do a little walk around here while I talk about it. Um, this car is uh, no accidents, clean Carfax. Uh, it spent its first 10 years in Texas, and then uh, in 2000 it went to Oregon. It's basically a two owner car. Um, the uh, split between the ownership between Texas and Oregon. A, a good friend of mine uh, bought it uh, from the second owner in Oregon, and uh, he bought it and really didn't do anything with it. It kind of just sat in his garage, and he had it for a year or so, uh, and uh, then offered it for sale to me, and I grabbed it and started recommissioning it, you know, and kind of getting, it had a few little issues. It had uh, blown out uh, exhaust manifold, gasket, and just some various stuff, tires, uh, struts were all bad, you know, just some maintenance items. The car's got 79,000 miles on it. And uh, so we went ahead and, you know, like I said, this was just kind of a personal car and I've just been kind of fixing it up and uh, enjoying it as I go. I've driven this car several thousand miles and I absolutely love it here. We'll kind of go around the car and do some imperfections and I'll talk about some more car, a uh, more, little more about the car when I'm driving it. But anyway, this is a great driver quality car. Um, you know, there's imperfections, you know, all over the car, like little paint chips and nicks uh, i'm not going to focus in on every little thing it's just general wear and tear on the car uh but the overall the car is in you know very very good uh mechanical you know and cosmetic condition it still has a few cosmetic issues that i'm working on you know and just kind of fixing up like i said as i go um so like i said just basic chips nicks you know and so on and so forth go across the paint here one thing that you'll notice it might be hard to see in the picture uh, but there's kind of some uh, it's really hard to see but kind of some bumps in the paint um, yeah, hard to explain or hard to see but just some little little imperfections there uh, got uh, like I said when I got the car here went and went all the way around and put struts in it, uh, coil over, uh, adjustable coil overs all the way around. So let's just keep kind of talking about the car here first. Uh, like I said, Nixon scratches, chips, the wheels, you know, Nixon scratches. Yeah. Um, on this car, we've got the Proxus uh, R888 R's. Uh, I tell you what, they are absolutely fantastic. The tires only got, I don't know, maybe maybe 1,000, 1,500 miles on them, uh, but they're very soft compound. They're like a 200 tread wear rating. So essentially they're a race car tire for the street. Uh, tires in these sizes, you know, regular standard performance tires, all season kind of thing, or, or you know, summer performance tires are just not available in matching sizes from the factory. So the only thing I could find in an actual correct sizes was these race tires. But I will tell you that after running these tires with the new suspension, I would not run anything else on this car. Um, you know, obviously it's not gonna be something that you wanna get out and hammer on in the rain or anything like that or cold weather, but that's not what this car is all about anyway. So, I mean, you're only gonna take it out on a nice day, so why not have the best rubber that you could possibly have on the car? And uh, looks fantastic. So on the rear here, we're running a 255 50 16. I love the beefy look, you know, it just kind of looks like a, a, a race car, you know, like an old school race car. Uh, looking at the front size here, I just want to go ahead and get you the sizes because I don't, I think they're a little wider than original, uh, but it really works. 225 50 15s on the front, so it's a 15 inch on the SE that had wider, bigger rims. The non SE just had 15s front and rear, but the SE had staggered wider wheels with a larger diameter in the back for handling. Uh, I'll talk to you more about the SE goodness here. <laughs> when we get inside the car, I'll just kind of keep showcasing the car here a little bit. It's like there's a little, little imperfection there. 
tail lights are in good condition. Maybe you can see on the spoiler here, you'll see some little bumps in the paint. Okay, you can kind of see them right there. You see the little, it's like, they're just little bitty bumps like, you know, cause this it's fiberglass car over a steel backbone chassis. And uh, you know, sometimes, you know, the it can kind of rise up imperfections underneath of the paint. So that's kind of what we're looking at here. On the rear bumper, uh, I let it roll back into the garage door. That's uh, my doing right there. Just one of those things that happens. Right, tail light. The tail lights are a little bit faded. A little scratch on that tail light right there. Probably the whole tail lights will probably buff out. That scratch would probably buff out too. Just like you would do a headlight, you can restore the tail lights. Coming around the right side. Love, love, love the wing on the SE. It just so goes with the line. I mean, just look at the body line on the car and look at the wing. Look how it just follows it. I mean, uh, oh, I just love it. This is, I had I had a 94 S4 Lotus and I loved it too. And I had both of them and I was kind of like, well, I'm gonna put both of them up for sale and keep whichever one I don't, I don't sell. But honestly, you know, the S4 was, um, you know, an immaculate car, almost flawless. But uh, there's something about the character of this car. I did that, stowing the roof. Uh, something about the character of this car, just something about this car that just really talks to me. And I really love it. Um, typical, like I said, just, you know, the stickier the tires too, the more road debris that they pull up. But you'll kind of see just various paint imperfections throughout the car. but not bad I mean it's all fairly evenly you know it's all you know fairly even and consistent you know so I I don't really I mean at some point in time as the car these cars are really going up in value I guess I would consider repainting the car at some point in the future but I really like the fact that I can get in this thing and drive it and have fun with it and not be worried about a little scratch or a little chip or a rock pit or something like that uh, the windshield is in excellent condition um, there's some, you know, very light pitting. Uh, I don't know if you can see it or not, but it's, it's very light. Actually, it's, it's considerably less. I don't know if it's just because it's such a flat raked windshield. Maybe it, it doesn't take much abuse, but, um, yeah, but it, it's actually in better shape than most cars of this mileage, honestly. So I don't know if I got the... I forgot the wheels. Let me check out the Lotus badge. Looks beautiful there. I put new center caps on the wheels when I got. I've done a lot of work to this car. I'll go into detail in the description of the car. You know the work and the the maintenance and everything that we've done on it. Um, we've done a lot to the car, so I won't uh, get into all of the detail here. We'll talk more about the car. And the uh, car wizard has done a lot of work on this car. Um, you know, when I got it, he's the one that's, uh, that's done most of the work. Uh, and then actually I did the, uh, I had fun doing the suspension myself, <laughs> but he, you know, fixed a lot of the little maintenance things that needed, needed resolve. Let's take a look inside here. All right. So on this car here, um, interior is kind of like the exterior, you know, it's in good condition. Uh, it's not perfect by any means, but it's definitely serviceable. The worst part about it is probably just the seats. Um, and that's actually on my list to get uh, redone, but I'm kind of showing you this car a little bit as a work in progress. So uh, we'll just talk about it and talk about what the issues are and what I plan on doing. So the carpets are in good condition. Um, what I probably plan on doing is pulling out the carpets probably and then re dyeing them. They're just a little bit discolored, you know, where the sun, uh, where the sun hits the, the carpets, you know, it's a little bit faded, a little discolored. Door panel is in excellent condition. I showed it to you. A little bit of wear around the door handle, but I mean, but really the door panels are in really good condition. Uh, the shift boot uh, is is pretty pretty worn. Uh, probably when I redo the seats, um, I'll have a new little shift boot lever uh, cover made. The carpets are actually in really good condition. Very good on that. 
Uh, I'm gonna show you here the seats, okay? So I'm gonna pan down the seats. You'll see on the top right corner, uh, you'll see here where you know the where leather is just aged. You know, it's just it's starting to dry and crack, and and the leather is actually fairly soft. I mean, you kind of see. It. I mean, it actually and their seats are super comfortable, uh, but they are showing some age and discoloration. But uh, really doesn't bother me that much. But considering that the really the interior is in very good condition, you know, I I do intend on having the seats uh, uh, re you know put back to. His, uh, factory leather condition. We'll look here at the center console, uh, obviously where you put your arm, you know, it's got some wear there. So uh, shift boot is actually in good condition. So no tears in the shift boot. Uh, climate control works, AC on this car works. Uh, so heat and all that good stuff, no problems or issues. The steering wheel, it's a GM steering wheel. This was the first year of the airbag. 89 did not have an airbag, and then 90 had an airbag. Uh, but the, So this car's kind of in between, but one great thing about this car, that it's, a 90's really a sweet spot, honestly. 89 and 90 are probably the best two years of, I mean, of four-cylinder Lotus period, as far as I'm concerned. Uh, it has standard brakes, and this car has Willwood racing brakes installed, but it does not have the later Delco, uh, hydro pneumatic, you know, uh, ABS system, which they had a lot of issues with and most people convert them. Um, looking at the steering wheel here, you know, it's got some cracks on the steering wheel, a little bit of warpage on the edge corners of the rubber. Uh, I actually have a, uh, I think it's a Momo steering wheel that I bought. I haven't uh, installed it yet, but it's about 10 millimeters short, uh, smaller diameter. And, uh, and you know, and it's a non-airbag steering wheel. Um, I bought that. I haven't put it in, but I'm kind of considering doing that. Now the SE, one of the things that they had here was the wood overlay, you know, lamination on the dash. And uh, these old British cars, unfortunately, the wood lamination wasn't their strong point in quality. <laughs> um, they just, you know, I don't know why it's cracked. Uh, I mean, the car... I mean, it smells fantastic in here. Just smells like a nice factory leather rich smell. Um, you know, that, that is, I guess my point is, you know, uh, no, I don't know what's caused this. I'm guessing just the heat from Texas. Uh, Cause you know, there's no signs of any moisture in the car or anything like that. So actually my plan on this, um, when I redo the seats is I plan on pulling this binnacle and I'm actually gonna have, you can have them redone the wood, but I, like the S4 that I had has the same binnacle and the same dash and uh, and it was black leather and uh, I really liked it. Um, it just made sense to me. The wood in this car doesn't really make sense. It's not a luxury car, it's a sports car. So I'm not sure what they were thinking there, but I do plan on um, having, pulling the, that wood out and then having it leather, uh, the surface uh, changed to leather. Just basically all I gotta do is just have them lay over some uh, leather on top of the wood, you know, take the laminate off and just recover it in leather. I think that would look really sharp. The pinnacle is in perfect condition, no issues. Um, the uh, the dash is leather, you know, there's a lot of leather in this car. You can see a little bit where the leather is just loosened up a little bit from its uh, panel. Um, again, it's not, it's very soft, it's not shrunk, it's just the glue is loosened up and it's just pulled away a little bit. Nothing that I would actually really mess with or be concerned about. Because the, look at the leather in this car. It's really pretty, it's really nice. There's a little bit of sun damage to the uh, A-pillar there. Same way on the driver's side, but I'm not gonna do anything about that. I'm just gonna treat it with some leather conditioner and soften it up. And, uh, and there, so we got the visors, they're all perfect. Still got the decals, got the mirror on the passenger side. Um, I love these seats. Look, they, look how super, super, let me get back here, super cushy. I mean, and they're really comfortable. And I'm six foot and I fit in this car perfectly. This is a very interesting thing here. <laughs> the uh, tilting of the seat, it just bends at the deal and just kind of, you know, it's like an old glove or something. You know what I mean? It just, you know, you just kind of, you just, sink in and fit into the car. Nice, soft leather headrests. 
Um, the driving position in the car is very, very good. I really like it. Got a little cubby hole here. I just throw my CDs and little things in there and there's a nice little pocket right here. Here's a little center console. You know, you can put your phone and kind of stow it away or whatever. It does have an aftermarket Alpine uh, stereo in it. I think that's been changed. I don't know. I mean, these basically had aftermarket units in them from the factory, so, but I think that's a little more modern than what would have been in the car. Uh, I'm not 100% sure on that. But uh, speakers, there's the one in the dash there. Mm, I just noticed it looks like, I can't tell. The speakers might be different. Uh, rear speakers. Actually, I might even upgrade the, the speakers. Um, easy stuff to do and the radio sounds good, but just, just actually this is just stuff I'm noticing just right now. Uh, you know, some simple things might make it sound better. Uh, so the whole sunroof pops out to give you a big open sunroof experience. It's very, very cool. So go around to the other side here. I will tell you here on the windows, both side windows do work. Uh, they're both slow. I mean, the right side, the left side is pretty good. The right side is very, very slow. It works, but, um, you know, I don't know, probably lube it up and... I would say probably get the uh, window motors probably rebuilt or something or change them, you know, because they just don't really seem to have the, the oomph and the power. There's the right door panel, very good condition. Little nick right there. But overall door panels are very nice. Like I said, the carpets are in really good shape. Uh, just a little discoloration here and there, just from the different areas of the sun sitting and then you'll see this passenger seat again texas probably got that seat happened the same thing on my delorean there the sun hits those corners and uh it does does take its toll now i do have the windows tinted on this car i'll, I'll kind of talk about that here in a second uh here's the glove box very cool um oh, got all kinds of stuff in here but uh, i do have the owner's manual i do have receipts and maintenance records for the car we'll go over that in detail in the description but uh, a little sticker there um yeah so that's interesting we have different speaker on the dash so i definitely want to change that all right but overall though, I mean, if you recover the seats and just some touch up, I mean, this interior actually is in pretty good shape. Um, just needs a little reconditioning. So gonna go pan back out here. Um, okay, so you'll notice that I have window tinting on the windows. Uh, looks very good, helps a lot with keeping cool in the hot summer. I drive this thing all, all all in the heat and everything. What I'm gonna do here, I tried to have them tint the rear windows, but they couldn't get in there, okay? And if you'll actually notice, there's actually some delamination of the window itself. You see how, uh, well not delamination, but basically the bonding of the, of the glass has pulled away. So what I'm actually gonna do is pull both quarter windows, have them tinted, and then reinstall them back in the car. That will make it absolutely fantastic uh, because I really love the tinted look. And uh, so, um, and, and you just gotta have that flowing, you know. It just doesn't look right <laughs> with the front glasses tinted and it just needs to flow into that quarter window, even though that's not in, you know, showing inside the cabin. Then the rest of these glasses, you know, you, you just leave them obviously. But again, again, you'll see here, where it's a little bit pulled free because they had a black, they had a little black um, inner lining, you know, just to kind of like, you know, to hide where they, where they glue the glass in. And a lot of that has deteriorated. So I'm just gonna pull that all off and fix that and make that look really sharp. I think that'd be kind of cool. All right, well, let's uh, pop the hatch here and take a look in, I guess we'll call it the, yeah, I'm gonna call it the hatch or the boot or the engine cover, but let's take a look here in the back. All right, got the locking gas struts here. Um, 
lots of space in this car. The sunroof actually does stow in the back. Um, so you can pull it out and it does stow back here. Here are some floor mats that I bought when I got the car. Uh, I need a little bit cleaned. I usually leave them in the car, but I wanted to show you the carpets. But um, you know, these are not original. They're a reproduction, but they work and, and look, look just fine. Uh, here's the battery. I believe there's supposed to be a cover over that battery. I don't have, but it's not, never really bugged me that much. Let me take these out so I can show you the carpets trunk is in good condition the carpet is in good condition little catch can there very nice all right i'll show you underneath the engine lid here so the engine and this engine lid just pops right out but i'm just going to lift it up here for the moment i'm not going to get too close in here i haven't cleaned in here for a while uh actually ever um this is basically how i got the car the uh the epoxy finish you know uh, from heat and age is peeled a little bit, uh, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to clean the engine bay here soon, uh, just to kind of tidy it up. But um, but it's in good shape. Inner, it's a charge. So what it is, it's an air to water intercooler, and uh, this engine stock makes 264 horsepower with um, 280 horsepower available in overboost. Uh, so basically, when all the conditions are good, uh, it'll basically boost up to 280 horsepower. Uh, this car does have an aftermarket exhaust on it. Um, it's kind of perfect. It's not too loud. It, uh, it still has the cat on it, but it's like a cat back exhaust. Sounds fantastic. You'll hear it. We got a, uh, a few mods done to this car. This car is probably putting out probably around 300 horsepower. Uh, it's dialed up a little extra boost. Got a, an aftermarket uh, wastegate there. Uh, some upgraded injectors. Uh, and then I believe it's got a tune in it. Uh, a good friend of mine who's a big Lotus guy actually tapped into the computer and kind of read some of the parameters and uh, was pretty impressed. Actually, he's the, uh, pretty impressed with this, with this car. He's got a S4S and uh, S4S was a pretty hot car and his was modded too. And uh, much to his, his and my surprise, uh, this little red lotus uh, ran off and hid from that car <laughs> so uh, a little lighter weight i'm not quite sure maybe the gearing i'm not quite sure but it definitely uh, in his car i don't think it was running 100 percent at that time but uh just my point is this car is very very strong uh took it out on the pig trail uh in arkansas and uh, with a whole bunch of uh guys it was actually Hoovy's uh, bachelor party and so I had a whole bunch of guys in sports cars on the pig trail and we all had some fun and uh, I kind of started out at the back of the pack uh, running <laughs> I'm gonna pop the front the frunk here uh, anyway so I started off at the back just kind of being conservative then by the end of the day or the end of the weekend I was starting off in the in the front of the pack and uh, this car uh, was definitely an overachiever let's just put it that way uh, kind of surprised everybody trying to show some of the little bumps on the hood here see if I can zoom in on that all right so we'll open up here spare tires in here really not much there's storage space most of it's in the trunk uh, but very easy access nice simple brakes uh, spare tires brand new never been on the ground here's your jack and tool kit uh, so all that is present and uh there's a nice little i won't open it but it's a neat little uh tool kit right there it's got all kinds of stuff in it tools and fuses and kind of cool cool to have that along with the car the jack and the iron everything is here so very very cool and this there's a little lever underneath the steering column it's kind of cool because if you don't know where this lever is at um you don't know how to open the front so kind of a nice security thing but but it is way tucked up in there and there's a little bar you just flip and uh, makes it really, really neat and really convenient to, uh, if you wanna, so I, I put valuables more in the, in the front to kind of keep things secure. One thing that's kind of cool here, I might show you, it's kind of just a neat little feature, but this car has twin gas tanks that is fed through a crossover pipe. And uh, so check this out. Uh, you can fuel up on either side of the car, but uh, there you go right there. And then I pop the other side, but we can't see it from here. But uh, see, you can fuel up on either side of the car. Oh, I guess I didn't pop that side. 
And then, so what I do actually, um, to make it uh, uh, fuel faster and, and more consistently, uh, I, I always pop both. Um, hey, we're, uh, we're being a Lotus here. Yeah, the right side sticking. So what I do is, no matter what side I pull up into, I um, I take both gas caps off, and uh, and then that way it uh, lets the other tank breathe, and it helps with fueling to get it uh, to get it working. Well, my right side is sticking there. Wonder if you guys know what this uh, tag means, Tyco. Actually, uh, let you guys in the comments see if you know what that's all about. Uh, you might have to be 40 years and older to understand what that means, but uh, it'll be kind of fun to see to see if anybody knows. So let's do this here. We'll get in this thing. I'll just hit the lights real quick. Both of the lights pop up and work perfectly. No issues. I'll come around and kind of show you with the headlights up. Uh, Pop-up lights, got to love them. And this car, man, the view out of the windshield is so cool. I mean, lights up or lights down. It's just, you just, it's like, you feel like your front feet are in the front bumper. I mean, you're just so far forward and you got this incredible view. The view on the corners, you know, looking to each side is a little bit limited, but overall the visibility is not that bad in this car. But uh, yeah, it looks neat with the headlights up. So let's, uh, let's get in this guy and take it for a spin and see how it drives. Best part, this is a driving machine. strapped into the Lotus here. I uh, got my old Lotus F1 racing cap on. Go Kimmy, back in the day. Yeah, racing for Alpha now. Uh, I'm gonna pop open the sunroof here. Um, the really experience this car, you crack the sunroof and the engines behind you, it just sounds are incredible. You hear the waste gate, blow off valve, you know, uh, letting out pressure and you hear the uh, the exhaust and the burbling and everything and the turbo just uh, so many senses and just so much sensory input on this car uh, this is kind of really get it's kind of a lot you know getting towards the end of the line of the you know this car was a supercar in its day it uh, I mean it was a giant killer I mean you know in 90 when this thing came out you know it uh, um, or actually in 89 uh, you know it beat the uh, Countach, it beat the Testarossa. The only thing I think it didn't beat them was on top speed, but it pretty much whipped them everywhere. 2.2 liter engine, uh, putting out 280 horsepower, uh, highest uh, horsepower uh, per liter um, in uh, record at that time. So really an incredible car. No traction control, no ABS. Uh, we do have the airbag, but pretty much everything on this car is analog as I believe sports cars should be. Let's uh, roll out here and we'll talk a little bit more about it, but we'll get rolling. Oh man, I hope the uh, the sounds come through because it's just glorious noises. Beautiful April evening here in Kansas, about 60 degrees out. The uh, turbo ought to uh, really love making some good boost here. We'll, uh, we'll give it a little squeeze on the throttle here and see what happens. Uh, it gets going quickly. Um, yeah, we've got to get a little more open road. Uh, this thing accelerates it. Zero to 60 was like 4.6 seconds in 1990. I mean, that's, that's impressive. Top speed was over 160 miles an hour. So this is a running little car here. Um, everything, like I said, it's got the Wheelwood brakes. It got some, uh, I'd have to look back in the receipts to see what uh, race 
racing pads I have on it, but a perfect pad for a street, you know, because they, they work at all times. And when I was running the pig trail in Arkansas, um, you know, it's kind of interesting because there was M3s out there, Porsche turbos, Lamborghinis, uh, all kinds of cars. And uh, everybody was experiencing brake fade and all kinds of issues. And I mean, I had no issues, but uh, got kind of a little clear road here. Give it a little, give it a little throttle. Whoa, broke the tires loose. Wow. And these are sticky tires. Just rolling on the throttle and first gear got loose. Wow, this car is, this car is amazing. <laughs> uh, sorry, I, I get a little excited about cars and, and this video is probably going to be a little bit long because uh, this car is a uh, really holds a special special spot in my heart um, but let's talk more about the car uh, 79,000 miles uh, but you know but it's been used and maintained I mean as cars should be uh, I talked about the cosmetic stuff we'll talk about the mechanicals uh, the engine is in tip-top shape doesn't use any oil doesn't burn any oil turbo um, you know just everything about the car like I said uh, stated about the brakes being being in fantastic condition uh, we're gonna go over here and change lanes drop down the second gear I got a, we got a little uh, bridge here we got to get yes. this car gets up and goes the tires are a little stiff uh, I did like I said when I bought the car the, the uh, struts especially the rears and I have their old part everything that I had you know come off the car I kept it but the rears were completely blown out the car was uh, not really drivable because there was just no damping in the rear but um, so I ordered uh, some adjustable coilovers and they're uh, they're single adjustables and uh, uh, so what's nice there is you know got a modern suspension under the car and then when you put these triple uh, eight, uh, eight R's on here um, this car is just amazing you know I've actually had I took it out and autocrossed it one time just for fun to kind of check the balance and the handling uh, but out on the street though it was just absolutely perfect like I said I went and, and uh, you know had had the best best time of my life ever in a car was running the pig trail in Arkansas in this car um, and that is that is honest to God's truth I'm gonna give it some gas here turbo you know just pushing you from the back like that and, you know this car one thing I love it it sounds like a group B rally car I mean it just it just has all those bangs and pops and, and just all that wonderful stuff uh, you know there's a little bit of boost lag you know it, it's uh, when it you know it hits about three thirty five hundred rpm um, you know then it just it just hits hard and pulls all the way to about 70 about a 73 70 72 7300 rpm red line uh this is uh this 2.2 liter engine i mean it's a famous engine i love the four cylinder lotus esprit uh i just think it's the sweet spot and then just this generation it's it's kind of you know the really the most reliable best performance you know still lightweight i mean this car still i think only weighs probably around 2700 pounds somewhere maybe 28 somewhere in that range um but uh you know so the horsepower to weight ratio is really really good uh but it's just the way that it handles itself too um the the, the handling and you know the mid-engine obviously is i mean look at the new corvette i mean mid-engine is pretty much proven itself as the best you know drivetrain configuration for a sports car um it's just the absolute you know i mean it's it's just what every where everything's going to to really get the best handling chassis uh it's a really cool chassis on this it's a you know it sitting in this car it's 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 neat you know it's, it's got this strange high uh, here i'll kind of point down a little bit you know it's got this high tunnel right here but that's uh <laughs> sorry i knocked my phone out of my holder there uh it's got this high tunnel and uh but actually it's perfect um, because it just kind of cradles you in the car uh everything falls into place my hand the shifter my elbows got the you know 
you know, drive drove this car four hours, uh, you know, to the uh, to the to the pig trail there, you know, and and just absolutely comfortable. I know it rides a little stiff, you know, especially it's a combination of the uh, the upgraded suspension and then the racing tires. You know, they're a pretty stiff sidewall, so it does ride a little stiff, you know, and so you know you hitting the bumps and the seams, but that's a small price to pay uh, for the joy when you get out on a smooth road and, and really get it out to where you can enjoy it and open it up and see. But uh, everything on this car, like I said, the climate control, everything works. Windows are slow, they work. Um, you know, the lights and, and so on and so forth. I mean, the car really doesn't have any, any uh, other than just its cosmetic wear and tear, it doesn't really have any issues. Um, you know, it's I, I get in this car every time. It, the funny thing is, I got all these different cars, and people always talk about Lotus, right? And I gotta say it, you know, uh, you know, everybody's got their acronym, you know, goofy things for all your Ford found on road dead, you know, all these blah, blah, blah. You know, everybody has to come up with their little slogan. Well, Lotus, it's, it's you know, people say it stands for lots of trouble, usually serious. And, uh, <laughs> but what's funny is I got all these different cars and every time I come to this car, I hit the key and it just fires right up. I mean, it's never, the battery's never dead. It can sit for months and I just jump in it and it's ready to go. Um, I'm so impressed with this car and, and like I said, you know, early Lotuses were very, you know, <laughs> they said that the original owners uh, were the uh, test drivers. <laughs> so, <laughs> but we're talking like when this car came out in the 70s, uh, the Gijaro design, you know, that folded paper wedge shape is just, I mean, it's just epic. And, uh, you know, this car came out in 70, oh, 75, I think, 76. And, uh, you know, and it's just endured all the way up into the 90s. There's been a few redesigns. This is really kind of like the, the uh, they might call it the S3. It's kind of the third generation. Uh, Peter Stevens actually uh, redesigned from McLaren. Uh, did the update and facelift on this car in 88 and it runs from about 88 to 93 on this one and then 94 the Julian Thompson redesigned uh, the, the, the last uh, spree um, but this is the sweet spot to me this is the car that you see in Pretty Woman uh, and then Basic Instinct it's the Lotus's spree SE and uh, so you know it's just got the cool um, you know movie history uh, I just I love and sometimes I gotta go back and watch those movies just to watch these cars uh, basic instinct that chase through that canyon uh, is is epic if you haven't seen it you gotta watch that but uh, oh, it just it's just it's just unbelievable we got uh, got another little bridge here you know I just love you know just going under bridges and just hearing you know he kind of traps that sound in there and you really get to get to hear it but second gear and we just kind of roll in. Oh, it sounds like a, oh my gosh, sounds like a Formula One car or something. <laughs> I mean, it just, they just don't make them like this. I mean, I don't know. Old cars, I don't think are ever gonna, ever gonna die. Um, you know, just, you know, you, you got, just like, think about your classic watches and stuff. I mean, they still, you know, everybody wants and loves classic watches, even though you've got your new, uh, you know, Apple, you know, watch and stuff like that. You know, it's kind of like Tesla, you know, it's kind of like the Apple watch of cars, right? I mean, you know, they have their place and, you know, and they're impressive, but it's not the same. It just doesn't trigger all of the senses like an old analog petrol car. I mean, it's just, it's just not the same. <laughs> I am old school. Uh, love old cars. 80s and 90s are just my passion. Uh, I just absolutely love things from this era. And uh, so I really, uh, thanks for coming along for the ride today. Um, I know this video is going to be a little bit of a long one, but, uh, you know, hopefully you've enjoyed it. And, uh, you know, it just, you know, just stay tuned and you'll and we'll bring uh, some more fun stuff to you so as always look us up euroasianauto.com 800-741-8136 uh, euroasianauto on facebook and uh you know and like and subscribe and stay tuned and as always have a great day and happy motoring
Lean on me when you're not strong. I need a friend. I'll help you carry on. Oh, it won't be long. So I'm gonna need somebody to lean on. Lean on me. It's for you, brother Tony. Love you, brother.